Hi, I'm Tim Moss with the Watchbox at Dubai Watch Week 2021 with the preeminent watch designer of the moment, design director at Bulgari, Fabrizio Buonamassa. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Ciao, Tim. Thank you so much for the presentation. It's a great pleasure to, to be here in Watchbox with you. So, a lot of folks know the Bulgari Octo Finissimo series, but they don't know where it came from and where you came from. So, we'll talk about these alternately. Tell me about your youth, how you got into design, why you chose that over, say, engineering. So let me say that I start my career when I was four. I start to make sketches, is my greatest passion, and still today I make sketches uh, all the day almost, with different technique, uh, but with different tool, but is uh, my greatest passion. And I start to design uh, and to draw comics, I'm honest, uh, because it was my first, uh, when, I, when I've seen the first, uh, the first book, uh, it was, wow, this is an amazing job, and I start to collect uh, uh, comics about uh, the artist because the f the first thing that is it was important for me was the quality of the drawing. I don't care about the story. It was just the quality of the stroke and the quality of the the w the way that the artist could have to to tell you the story. Immediately after, I discovered the the the, the car design and I was passionate about these amazing shapes and the proportions of uh, the very well-known Italian designers and Italian coach builders. Immediately after was the watch. So let me say that the watch and the cars is always uh, the, the, the big passion for me. I uh, joined Fiat Group as a, as a stylist, as a designer in 1995, if I remember, 1996. And I spent uh, all my degree thesis and I made the stage and after I was hired as a, a stylist uh, for uh, four or five years uh, and after I joined, uh, I joined Bulgari. I chose Bulgari in 2001 more or less because it makes watches in a different way. Uh, you can see it was the moment of the aluminum, it was very popular, the Bulgari Bulgari was an amazing watch completely, totally different from the other watch, watch brands. And uh, I immediately recognized a very strong link uh, with, uh, with the Italian design culture. Pure shapes, uh, very bold proportions, uh, and a different way of thinking. I make some sketches and I send the drawings to, to, to Rome. And I, after a few weeks, uh, I had an interview with, uh, with uh, Paolo Bulgari. And we start immediately to design about, to talk, uh, to talk about uh, uh, watches and cars, uh, design, uh, beauty of uh, objects uh, and, and arts. And after a few months I was hired as a designer in, uh, in the design studio in Rome. Could you tell me a little bit about your creative process? You've mentioned in the past that you're drawn to shapes, but could you flesh that out so we understand better? Uh, the creative process uh, is the most difficult things to explain. Honestly, honestly, you don't know. We are always uh, uh, attracted by things, even if you don't know, but when you walk around the street, uh, your eyes start to, to have a lot of images in your brain. And uh, I don't know, sometimes I just, uh, I just uh, notice something and I start to make a sketch. I uh, have some images in my brain. Uh, if you are able to make sketches, uh, is an important tool. It's not the most important one if you want to be a creative person or a designer. The most important tool is your brain. In my brain, I'm able to imagine the object that turns around my brain. I can go in the watch, I can disassemble the watch. Uh, I can imagine all the details about the case and the movement. That's why I'm so, I think that I'm so uh, precise when I make sketches, because it's absolutely clear in my mind. One of the most uh, important teachers that I had called this kind of uh, uh, things mental design model. So you have your object, it's absolutely clear in your mind. In a 3D, it's like a wide frame. It's like uh, you, know, you, you imagine some uh, uh, fantasy uh, movie that you have a small person that is in a huge world and start to look at things in this way. It's exactly this way that I have in my mind when I think about an object. That's why it's so easy for me to make sketches. So now, there's a lot of uncertainty in the collector community about where the, the Bulgari Octo design actually came from, and it dates to the early 2000s, but could you tell me exactly what the genesis of yeah. that shape was? Uh, when I joined Bulgari in 2001, uh, Bulgari already got um, the Manufacture des Autorogeries with inside Daniel Roth and Gerald Genta from uh, Hourglass. And they start immediately to redesign uh, the two products, the, the Daniel Roth watch and the Gerald Genta watch. Uh, so we get Gerald Genta not from the Gerald Genta, the owner, but from Hourglass. Gerald Genta sold the company to Hourglass. 
I never met Gerald Genta. In a certain moment when I joined Bulgari, they asked me to make some sketches about uh, the future of the Octo. They already had some ideas uh, because they doesn't have an inter inter internal design department, so they use some external consultant. In a certain moment say, okay, uh, Bulgari design team in Rome, could you help us to develop this watch? They asked me to make the first sketches about the bracelet, the metal bracelet. The case was already designed, but not in a very precise way. So we helped a, a, a bit to design uh, the, last, uh, the last evolution of the case. I was in charge for some uh, uh, dials and for the first sketches of uh, the metal bracelet. It was too early, they decided to go ahead with, uh, with the caoutchouc strap. Uh, but when I designed at the end, uh, more or less four, five years ago, the first uh, uh, ultra slim bracelet for the Octo Finissimo, it was more or less the same design. Um, so the design is something that uh, <clears throat> it's very Bulgari, the Octo, because we love to play with the pure shapes. As you can see, we start to use the octagonal shape with the round shape bezel, thanks to the first uh, coin collection in the 70s, designed by Gianni Bulgari. And it was for the first time the jewelry um, collection with coin instead of uh, gemstones. But they were obliged to use a round shaped chaton on the octagonal bezel. So they choose the octagonal bezel, but they put on top a round shaped bezel at the end. Uh, this is the origin a bit of the octo. Uh, pure shapes, uh, it's a part of even of the one of the most uh, let me say, iconic inspiration and most important inspiration for the brand is the architecture. In Rome, you can find a lot of huge and very important monuments that come from the Roman kingdom, but you can find even a lot of modern and contemporary monuments that comes from the, the 50s, the 40s, and we call this kind of architecture functionalism or rationalism. Pure shapes uh, with the white marble or travertino with just a square opening or arch. This is very famous in Rome. So uh, this is one of the roots of the Bulgari, uh, Bulgari aesthetics. Uh, play with pure shapes. Uh, when you combine together, you have a new aesthetics, but without any decorative elements. So now, in 2014, you launched the first Octo Finissimo. Yes. Clearly, you didn't start designing it in 2014. Yeah. So a decision had to be made not to try an all new shape, but to stay with the Octo, yes. but change it. Why did you stay with the Octo rather than create an all new design? Allora, uh, so in a certain moment, uh, we invest a lot in this two manufacturing side. And uh, we develop an amazing and amazing know-how and we discover that they already have an amazing know-how. At a certain moment, we discover that we are able to make ultra thin watches. That it looks very simple, but is one of the most complicated things that you can imagine because you have to compress all the functions in, uh, in a very few millimeters, that not five or six is more or less one or two, two and a half, three millimeters. So in a certain moment we say, okay, but now we are mature enough to, to follow and to, to imagine our own way. Um, it was even the moment about the first uh, uh, crisis in terms of uh, economics. Uh, the people start to want to hide their watch because before, uh, let me say that this uh, new evolution of the ultra thin watches, it was a very chunky watches with, uh, with a lot of stones, uh, uh, gold uh, everywhere, but it was difficult to hide. So you want to show your power through the watch. In a certain moment, some very important persons start to hide the watch because it was not the right moment to show their power through the gemstones and gold watches. As a designer, you have to get the trends and you have to get the hidden needs of the market. Again, making beautiful sketches is not the most important tool. It's your brain. You have to get the hidden needs of the clients. The client, somebody doesn't know that needs something. So you have to go inside. Even the, the economics, you have, to, you have to take care about uh, the money, in which way the money moves around the world. The taste changes and the needs change. So in a certain moment you say, but why won't you make a contemporary ultra thin watch? Because you know, on the market, you have very famous brands that start to make ultra thin watches before us, but it's always the, the round shape with the thin bezel and white face with the black uh, shiny alligator strap is a tuxedo watch. But we are Italians and we say, why don't we make a new shape? Why don't you make uh, a new sport, chic, ultra thin watch. And the Octo was uh, the most unexpected. 
it was a great success during the General Genta um, management. In a certain moment, we decided to have three watch brand. It was too much for Bulgari. And, and, and that's Gerald Genta, Daniel wrote, and Bulgari. Exactly. It was completely absorbed by Gerald Genta. And I become, as a design director for watches division of Bulgari, I start to design myself by myself, even the Gerald Genta and Daniel Roth. In a certain moment, we say, but guys, we have this Octo. It is a very powerful case with a lot of details that we start to design 10 years before. It's a part of the Bulgari heritage because to the history, the round shape with the octagonal bezel, squeeze. Why don't you try to have an unexpected ultra thin watches? And we start to imagine, we start to develop the movement. On the other way, we start to develop the design. When we have seen the first prototype, we say, wow, this is something that doesn't exist. Even for us, it was, wow, what is this? It's difficult to, now it's like the Serpenti to Bogas. Sometimes I receive the, 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 the question is, but is this a time pieces or is it jewelry pieces? It's a Bulgari product. It's exactly the perfect Bulgari product. Because even for us, they say, it's a time piece or is a, is a bracelet wrapping your wrist. And was the same with the Octo. You see something that doesn't, uh, doesn't look uh, no, uh, common. But when a designer make a sketch and say, okay, this is good, maybe for us it seems that it's already old. So when we discover the ultra thin execution on the Octo, we say, guys, it's, uh, it's something that is uh, it's unexpected. So we put the first uh, manual winding to be on with the rose gold case, uh, sun um, polish finishing and brushed finishing. The Basel Fair was a great success. Uh, everybody started to talk about the, Oc the Bulgari in a different way. But team, it was an exploit. 30 pieces, uh, grand complication watches, gold case, very expensive product. Okay, done. Here too, we start to develop uh, the tourbillon, but we already had in mind, and we had on the, on the desk, the minute repeater. The ultra thin, the, 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 the thinness minute repeater. This was the first step on the Octo Finissimo history, because in a certain moment, the movement is so thin and the hammers and the gongs are very thin. So as a designer, I say, guys, we need something to amplify the sound because otherwise it's just this, the thinness minute repeater, but you cannot hear the sound. Why don't we use the titanium? It was during a meeting. Ah, it's a good idea, Fabrizio, but you know, it's uh, the most noble complication in the watchmaking industry. We have to use a noble material like gold, rose gold, white gold. I say, Bye. okay, guys, but I'm sorry, it's a good idea but we are not Swiss, we are Italians. And uh, I need the material to amplify the sound. So uh, why don't you use titanium again? Okay, we can try, but please, if we use titanium, I want to see titanium. So matte finishing, warm, dark gray, not polished because it looks like steel or it looks like uh, uh, white gold. This is exactly the Italian design approach. We have to play with constraints, and constraints drive the aesthetics. That's why you find this uh, alignment, this unique blend between uh, um, know-how in terms of movement and aesthetics. Because in the products, if you have just a new engine, but the car is ugly, it's just a beautiful engine. On the other hand, if you have a beautiful car, but the engine doesn't work very well, it's very good for your garage, but you don't want to like to use it. That's why today we are very happy. A lot of people during the Dubai Watch Week, this is an amazing event, start to Fabrizio, shake hands. I love the Octo and I would love to have the Octo because for the first time in our history, we have a new statement in terms of movement that on the other hand, we have a new aesthetics. The titanium uh, uh, minute repeater, it was very well uh, accepted during the Basel Fair. Wow, it's a new aesthetic, a minute repeater that comes from an outer space. It looks a sport watch, 30 pieces, expensive product, uh, grand complication watch with an amazing sound. Okay, now the tourbillon, now the minute repeater, Bulgari start to have something interesting. The bigger step, it was the titanium, our minute and second with the automatic movement. We start to develop uh, the tool beyond the minute repeater and the automatic movement uh, more or less at the same day. So we start to have a very precise schedule. For years, it was for the first time the jewel maker that start to have an approach like a watchmaker. 
because you know in the watchmaking industry you have to plan your production for three, four, five years sometimes. When you develop a grand complication movement, you know when you start and you never know when you finish. So with our uh, pipeline, it was clear for us that in the, the fourth years, it was the year of the, of the automatic one. That's the watch that everybody wants to wear. It was a very affordable price with this amazing aesthetic and it was an automatic movement with the peripheric rotor made in platinum. This changed completely the perception of the Octo Finissimo. So now you've released a world premiere, a, a thinnest watch with a new design, either the original tourbillon, manual wine skeleton, minute repeater, the automatic in 2017. Yeah. Every year a world premiere, since you do plan product development three, four, five years in advance, who's creating this roadmap? Is it one man? Is it collaborative? Bulgari is a, is a, a jewelry brand. We have five business units. Jean-Christophe Ben manage all this business unit. We have five managing directors, but for sure we have our plan very clear in mind, but we have to share with the, manager, with the, with the CEO, and the CEO have to share with the group. So uh, Jean-Christophe Ben helps a lot Bulgari watches division to become uh, uh, an interesting player in watchmaking industry today. I'm not obsessed to say we are the best, uh, we are the most iconic one. We will see just the market in the next. Now we are 10 years old, the Octo Finissimo more or less, just market can tell you in the next 10, 15 years if you are really talking about an iconic watch. But for sure, Jean-Christophe Babin helps a lot, the business you need to develop because you know he knows very well the market, he knows very well the product, he knows very well the watchmaking crowd. And uh, he pushed a lot us with the different, with new challenge. He put a lot of speed. Uh, okay, guys, the drawing is amazing. See you next time. See you next month to have a prototype. So uh, we develop a different know-how. We develop uh, manufacturing side in a different way to have. A, today we have Les Sentiers and Saint Léger are two very important manufacturing side. It's our manufacturing side. We produce the movement in Le Sentier, the most strategic one. Almost the whole uh, Finissimo lineup is produced in Le Sentier. We produce all our chiming watches, and we have the Three Hammers Carillon Tourbillon, the Grand Sonnery Tourbillon, the Thinness Minute Repeater. So it's an important, uh, it's an important brand today. Let me say. And because it is important, and since you mentioned Monsieur Babin. He previously ran Tag Heuer, yeah. and you're inside of Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy, but you're not part of the watch group with Hublot and Tag Heuer and Zenith. How is it that Bulgari has this independence and gets to more or less manage its own plan? I think Tim, this is, a, this is a part of the LVMH group DNA. Um, they leave you to develop your own brand through your own DNA. Uh, they don't want to have uh, a watch that looks like another one. Uh, I never discuss about strategic because LVMH Group wants that Bulgari become the watchmaker in this kind of field. They leave me completely free and alone to imagine the evolution of the brand DNA through the products. Maybe in other groups it's different, but honestly I cannot tell you because I don't know so in deep uh, the other group. Now, beyond this um, notion that you do have independence, you do have a lot of creative free reign, you are trying to create a world premiere every year, uh, you're not really building a watch and then building it around an existing movement. In almost each case, you're building the movement tailored to the watch design. So you can't just be a stylist, you have to work with engineers. Yeah. How does that work and do you actually design the way the movements look and how the finish is going to be executed? This is the biggest difference in terms of aesthetics when you have your own manufacturer inside and when you are obliged to get movement outside to assembling the, the watch. You can design your watch and your movement from scratch. So now, uh, that's why we have the, the perpetual calendar with this unique uh, way to read the time and information because from the, the beginning, during our first meeting in manufacturing side with the watch master, we say, guys, I need a, a, a perpetual calendar, easy to read. Uh, we have an amazing perpetual calendar on the market, beautiful watches with the full of small counters. It's impossible to read. Now I'm getting old. Uh, this is even an evolution of my aesthetics. When I, when I joined Bulgari, I made very small figures, very small details on the dial. And I say, guys, sometimes during the meeting, I say, Fabrizio, but honestly, I cannot read it. Yes, but I can read it, so it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's okay. 
Now, when my designers come with the design, I say, guys, honestly, you, you have to put something bigger on the dial because now I'm getting older. I need the, the eyeglasses. So the idea was to have a very simple and readable dial. This is at the beginning and the origin of the Octo Finissimo. And a very easy to wear grand complication watch. Uh, the ultra theme execution, even if we're talking about just hour, minute, and second, is a grand complication watch. When you combine together ultra theme, ultra theme execution and the automatic movement, is always a grand complication watch. You know, you know on, the, on the Octo Finissimo, we have just the 12 and 6, the small second counter, and the indexes. For the perpetual calendar, it was the same. Guys, I would love to have two counters for the months and the day of the week. The leap year, as you prefer, but a big date because it's the most useful uh, uh, counter that I have to see. So we start to develop the movement and they start to arrive with some uh, layout and say, I don't want to have four counters because the 30, why don't you put a retrograde one, the biggest as possible? And they make it. And after they develop the movement, they develop the layout and they send me the drawings and so we start to play with the case and we start to play with the shape of the bridges, with the finishing, with the anglage, with the finishing of the wheels, with the finishing of the main plate. So as a designer, we have to take care about all the components that you can see on a watch. So now, you're comfortable working with designs that had precedent before your arrival. And while the Octo certainly had a little bit of history, Serpenti in the aluminum series had more still. Uh, just in the last year, we've seen redesigns of the aluminum, which yeah. was a big release when it came out in the yeah. 90s. It was a technical breakthrough. You don't see a lot of 90s revival watches. Why did you decide to revive the aluminum series, and how did you change it to make it contemporary? You know, Tim, we are not a vintage, uh, a vintage brand. We start to have watches 100 years ago. It was a jewelry watch. The biggest success and the watch that everybody knows is the Serpenti. They start in the 30s. It's a jewelry watch, uh, but uh, we, were, we become very famous uh, in the 70s uh, with the Bulgari Bulgari watch designed by Gianni Bulgari and Gerald Gent. But it's still uh, the same watch that we already, already have, so we cannot make a vintage edition of the Bulgari Bulgari because through the years it's the same watch. Uh, during my career I designed four times the Bulgari Bulgari and uh, honestly the best one is the first. Today we still have the Bulgari Bulgari with the, with the flat cylinder case. We removed the logo with some, uh, with some uh, executions. Still today is the best Bulgari Bulgari that you can imagine. On the aluminum it was the same. In a certain moment we, 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 we changed the rules. In a certain price point in the 90s uh, we were the first to use aluminum and caoutchouc together with this very powerful color scheme, black and white. It was due to the to the, to the evolution of the aluminum chassis in the automotive industry. In the 90s, the aluminum was the most uh, incredible alloy. Uh, the space frame chassis in the automotive industry was like a spaceship. So the, again, Bulgari is able to get the biggest trend and to change to make a luxury product. It was the same with Gianni Bulgari. In the 74, the first Bulgari Roma watch, it was a digital watch with the digital module developed and made in Italy for the first time in a gold case. And you cannot buy it. This Gianni Bulgari can give you as a gift if you are a very important client for the brand. So the digital watch, it was the most important trend in the 70s, but nobody can imagine to have a digital module in a gold case with the Bulgari, Roma, and Bossed on top. Again, the aluminum was the biggest trend and Bulgari makes this a very unique watch. When two years ago, we put a lot of focus and attention on the, on the Finissimo. And it's not possible to make all these kind of things if you have a lot of things to do. So the Finissimo was our obsession. In a certain moment, the Finissimo and Serpentis start to establish a new aesthetic, so we were able to imagine different products. And the aluminum is back. They come to my office and say, okay, now we have again the aluminum. It's a long discussion during the years. What you have imagined, Fabrizio? A new aluminum 2.0, different design, different shape, different color. Please, don't touch the watch. I'm not able to improve the design. The watch is almost perfect. It's already, everybody knows the watch as an iconic in, a watch in a certain segment. I'm not able to improve the design. We have just to make it in the best execution as possible. 
Now, Serpenti has an even longer history, yeah. dating back at least to the 1940s. Yeah. Many different styles over the years. You recently redesigned the line. You brought back mechanical movements. You restyled the interface with the wrist. Since it is a ladies series, uh, what's the design process like there? And do you bring in women to consult when you redesign something as iconically? It's our, it's our most iconic design. Uh, everybody knows Serpenti is the signature of Bulgari. We'll, we've, today we found Serpenti in different, uh, in different categories of the brand, for jewelry, for sure, watches uh, and accessories. Um, they start to, to produce Serpenti with the two bogus bracelet in the 30s, the, the, the oldest one that we find on the, the auction and uh, with private collection it was 30, 34, if I remember well. It was a two bogus bracelet. Again, a ga just Bulgari can turn a gas pipe in a luxury product. Uh, this is a part of the Italian aesthetics, Italian uh, uh, design culture, like Achille Castiglioni that takes out from the tractor the chair and the put in the middle of your dining room, and today you find the Mezzador stall in the MoMA Museum in New York. Um, we love to play with the aesthetics because when you have these kind of things, we are not talking about decorative elements, we are talking about the shape of the technology. That's why the tubo gas is always the same, because it's impossible to change these two elements of gold that turns around the spring. This is the aesthetic of this technology and we love it. So in a certain moment, uh, Serpenti becomes a very incredible uh, um, signature. Just for, the, just for the secret watch, very high-end watches with diamonds, with enamel, with, uh, with the turquoise, with art stones, gemstones. But it was just a niche in our, in our lineup. At a certain moment, we are looking for something different, honestly. We are looking for the evolution of the Bulgari Bulgari Tubo Gas. But again, uh, when you play with the iconic watch 99%, if you want to change, you make mistakes. And it was the third meeting and nothing comes out. Many prototypes, many different ideas, but uh, it's impossible to make a beautiful, uh, a more beautiful watch if you compare with the Bulgari Bulgari Tubo Gas, the original one. In a certain moment, I turned the page of the agenda, of the product meeting agenda, and I start to sketch the Serpenti to Bogaz as you know today. And they say, why don't you come back in the Serpenti? Uh, you know, Fabrizio is a, is a difficult uh, object. We already have Serpenti, but just in uh, high-end watches. But we don't have nothing we can try. Often, the most iconic products in the industrial design, in everyday life, in the history, the product that you find in the museum comes out from just one very simple idea. And often when you are lost, you have to back at your roots and you have to back in your DNA. Often, the answer is in your DNA and uh, you have to be able to imagine an evolution of your, your DNA. We have an amazing archive in Rome, full of different signs, but my approach and our approach is not to go to archive to copy and paste from the past. Again, we are very short history in watchmaking industry, in watches. We start to have very important watches in the 70s. And it comes out from the aesthetics, not from a movement. So our idea today is to be able to reinvent the brand through our products. Today we have more or less 10 different ways to wear a Serpenti watch, starting from the Tubo Gas, that still today is the most iconic watch and is the most important success. We have the Serpenti Seduttori, we have the Serpenti Spiga, we have the Serpenti Romani, we have the Serpenti high-end watches, the secret watches. Each time you can choose your Serpenti, but you cannot mistake it's a Bulgari watch. And the Octo Finissimo is the same, you love it or you don't love it, but you cannot mistake it's different from the others. Where do you draw your inspiration? Cars, industrial design? Everywhere. Everywhere. You never know when the idea comes out. You have to be ready to, to get inspiration, like images, like details, like the people that walk around the corner, around the street. Before the COVID, I travel like crazy. And I spend sometimes 30, 40 minutes at the corner of Fifth Avenue just to, just to see the people that walk around. The different way that I have to, to, to wear uh, details to wear the, the jacket uh, because through this kind of uh, things you can imagine that maybe they need something and they, they don't need other things. 
And uh, when you travel a lot, you get many inspiration from the architectural elements, from the cultural differences, for the different things that you see in Tokyo that is different from London, that is different from Dubai, that is different from New York. Our roots are in Rome. We are Italian uh, jewel maker that are very well known to play with the colored gemstones. We have a very bold proportions, but the taste change, and even our taste change. So you never know when the inspiration, when the idea comes out. You have to be ready. That's why I always have pen and paper with me because if, not, if I'm not able to to fix the frame, the idea, it's a, it's a way, and it's possible for me to to get it again. That's Fabrizio Buonamassa of Bulgari, the designer of the 2021 Egido at the GPHG. Sir, thank you so much. Thank you. It was a good pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.